What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Queen's House Podcast. I am your homegirl, Shay. And of course, I have with me a bomb, and I do mean bomb. Okay, guess with me today, I'm going to bring her in so she can introduce herself. Ma'am, please let the people know who you are. Hey, everybody. My name is Kendra Dixon, and I am a registered nurse. Awesome. Listen, Miss Kendra Dixon is here today. To um, She's actually one of the third guests this month for the uh, February interviews for nurses and um, healthcare professionals. So today she's actually going to be diving into uh, the nurse background and what it's like to be a nurse and a minority nurse, uh, most importantly. So we're going to get into the questions. First, she's going to uh, let, her, let us know what her credentials are, where she went to school, what kind of degrees and things like that that she has. So we'll know that she a legit nurse, okay? Like she went to school for that. <laughs> so, ma'am, where did you start with schooling? Let's start there. So, my schooling, I initially went to Metropolitan Community Colleges to kind of do my prereqs. Mm -hmm. um, life took a toll. I took a yeah. break from school, um, had a baby and all those good things. And then when I decided to go back, I tried um, Brown Mackey. Okay. Um, it was kind of pricey, so it didn't work out for me. But great. Um, unfortunately... Um, I had to transfer, and so it was a good thing that Metropolitan took most of my credits, and so it plus the oh, credits good. that I already had. Um, so I was able to transfer those credits, finish my prereqs at Metropolitan Community College between Penn Valley and Longview is where I did my prereqs. Um, and then I did end up applying for nursing school, and I got accepted in 2016. Oh, wow. Um, and I graduated from Penn Valley with my associate's degree in nursing in 2016. Okay. Um, woo -woo. okay, and, and, come on, and, uh, run it down then. Yes, and I am <laughs> currently back in school at w Western Governor University, also known as WGU, um, to get my BS in. Um, I had it's been thoughts of kind of maybe going back and get my master's and my NP, but I'm just get this BS in under my okay. belt, and, right? And where we can go from there. <laughs> yes, that is amazing. You know what? When I first started, uh when I actually graduated high school and I thought about what I wanted to do long term, I wanted to be a pediatrician because mm -hmm. I love kids. But then when I thought about that schooling part, I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pick something else because this ain't it. Yeah. This this ain't it for me. Um, Going to school for anything medically, especially to get certification for it. Oh, it's a lot of work. It is. It's, it's a lot of work. Yes. And I'm pretty sure that there are so many different uh classes that go into play. Mm -hmm. when wanting to be a registered nurse mm -hmm. if there what, is, was, what was some of your most difficult classes that you had to take um some of my most difficult classes was um so when it started at prereqs like you know biology chemistry oh, yeah and, you know once you take those classes so like i graduated from high school in 2007 so i took most of my science classes back in then. high school but right. unfortunately for nursing they only accept a five year they only good for five years Oh, wow. Yeah. No matter if you pay for it, it's on your degree. They wow. They're only going to accept them if it's five years or less. So. Wow. Needless to say, I had to repeat some of those classes. Yeah. And baby. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> but I got through, though. It was good. I mean, and then nursing school itself is a whole different ball game. Yeah. Um, it's one thing to do it when you're straight out of high school, you go through. But mm -hmm. when you have a kid or family yeah it's more difficult because you have to divide your time but nursing takes a lot of your time yeah um, but my support system was so bomb my mom my dad my best friend yeah you know like his dad like I had everybody like he had just started preschool I had everybody like you pick him up this day give him a bath right like we had a schedule in yeah, they they have yeah. my yeah. They have my. Bed. I know that's right, and you know what? That's one thing. This one thing that's good to say about you specifically as a person is determination. You know what I mean? Once your mind is set on mm -hmm. what you want to do, once you got goals set in mind, mm -hmm. nothing can get in the way of that because mm -hmm. there's a bigger picture at the end of it. Absolutely. And so going through the classes, you know, having family, having a child, and having to balance all of that right. with something as can be as stressful as nursing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The classes already are demanding. Yeah. You have to reach, you know, certain goals by the end of the semester. Yep. You got to have a certain GPA by the end of the semester. You yes. know, certain grades got to be met. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to just be any nurse. You want to be a top of the line nurse. Right. And it's so weird because nursing has a different grading rubric. So we're oh, okay. in the normal 
grading rubric, a C is a 70%. Yeah. For nurses, a C, a B was 77%. So imagine, Ooh. so yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's why I'm glad I chose, some, <laughs> I chose to do something different. Listen, because my grades was average in high school, yeah. but I know going to college, it was going to be a whole nother ball game. So I'm glad yeah. I chose something different. Because <laughs> listen, I'm going to leave a nurse into you. I'm going to let you handle that. Um, and so the degree that you received, what was the degree that you received? I know you said you got your associates. It was and a, what you're going to school currently to get. It's called an associate's degree of nursing. Okay. Okay. So, and, and the only thing is, it's the credentials behind your name. Because once you take that NCLEX and get your boards and you're a certified RN, whether you have an ADN or a BSN, you're still a registered nurse. You do okay. the same thing. The only difference is that BSN is the business aspect of it. So if you want to go into management or oh, wow. that, well, it just looks good. You know, it looks yeah. good. So yeah. that's the only thing, you know. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so question number one. How long have you been a nurse? I have been a nurse. I graduated in 2018. So it's been about four, four and a half years since I've been okay. a nurse. So I'm cool. still kind of a baby out here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you enjoying it? Are you liking it? I am enjoying it. And then, I mean, with nursing, people fail to realize nursing doesn't mean you're working at a bedside with the patient. There's so many things a nurse can do mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even think that's a nursing job. You get what I'm saying? Wow, yeah. So with me only being four years, I've had a great experience because I've experienced a lot of things. For one, the pandemic in 2020 was Ooh, a job by itself. I bet. But I started in med surge. From med surge, I went to labor and delivery, which Ooh, I thought was, was my goal. I thought that was my goal in life. No, wasn't no, you? No, it wasn't nah. for me. It wasn't for me. <laughs> it wasn't for me at all. So okay. you know, I took it to the floor. I was like, okay, it's, it's other things to do. You got to leave for nursing. So then I went to a, a family clinic. You know, that was just the in-between time and the meantime. Um, and now I am currently at an OBGYN office. And okay. I'm triage nursing. So I'm on the phone mostly. And the good thing about it is I'm hybrid. So I go in the office two days. I work from home two days. I do the same thing in the office that I do at home. Mm -hmm. um, I deal with women, mostly, you know, OB patients. Right. They have a problem or just need to be triaged over the phone without actually having to come and see a doctor. I'm able to prescribe certain medications without a doctor's order for protocol purposes. Uh -huh. um, and I think I have found my niche. Like, I, I, I knew I always wanted to work with women once I got into nursing. It used to be a pediatrician before. But that that is that's been said a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew I wanted to work close with women because I can relate. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Um, and so this is so yes, I do work as a triage OBGYN nurse now, and I love it. My doctors are amazing. Um, it's a small practice. They have two offices. Um, and I, I do, I love it. The team is that's great, awesome. the people I work with is great. Um, yeah, I love it. That's awesome. And one thing I love that you said is that you had to actually do a little bit of everything yeah. when it came to nursing mm -hmm. to find out what it is that you actually like. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people get the misconception of being a nurse is that it's just one specific thing that you do mm -hmm. or one, one specific area that you have to work in. Mm -hmm. But they're so it's so diverse as yeah. far as what you're able to do yeah. being a nurse. So I love it. I love that. What's your favorite part about being a nurse? My favorite par part about being a nurse is... The response that I get from my patients when I know that I've made their day or made them feel better in some type of way, you know, and, and you know, mm -hmm. and I just, you have those ones who are just like, thank you so much. Sometimes some people just need an ear, like, you know, yeah, and a listening ear in my, that's, you know, that's my goal. Like I want to be there for people, get them well when they're not feeling well. And right. you know, that's just what I like to do. I love that. A nurse is like a best friend. Okay. For real. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a yeah. nurse is because, like a best friend yes because you know I love my doctors I love my doctors but sometimes you know they're so busy they have other things they have to do um we're their first contact and so sometimes you know doctors they boom boom in and out and out yep. and they don't really hear what you're trying to tell them exactly and so as a nurse my first job is to be an advocate for my patient and, that, and I learned that you know from working on the floor but that's anywhere but definitely from working on the floor because Yes, your doctors, they do do their round them. But like I said, they're trying to get to all these patients on right. all these floors and all these rooms and, you know, all these medications they got to change or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they miss what the patient is trying to say. And so yeah. 
when you know what's going on with your patient because you've been with that patient for 12 hours a day for maybe three days in a row or mm -hmm. whatever um you know what is needed and you advocate for that patient you communicate with the doctor and you get what the patient needs I love that. One mm -hmm. thing I love, and I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but if I got a nurse that I really, really like and I call and I want to speak to my doctor, but I got to speak to the nurse first and the nurse ain't there, yeah. or they send me to another doctor's nurse, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just call back. <laughs> I'm going to call back tomorrow. I don't even worry about it. You know what? I'm going to just show up. Right. I'm going to just do that. I'm going to just pop up because I know she there. So that's yeah. how you know you got a good nurse when you don't want to yeah. speak to anybody else. Yep. Or when you got a good doctor, you don't want to yeah. be referred to nobody else. I remember when uh, I was pregnant with my son. And mm -hmm. I was supposed to do a um a scheduled C-section, but he came a week early mm -hmm. than my scheduled C-section. And so my doctor was on call the week I was actually supposed to give birth. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm good with that. So he came the week before. So the doctor that was on call, I was like, you know what? Can he just stay in there a little longer? Or can y'all switch shifts? Because I want my OBGYN right. to be in there with me. She didn't been with me up to this point. Yeah. And now you're telling me he coming a week early and she ain't going to be there? Right. Yeah, I don't like that. I need the whole staff on staff. Okay. Yeah. I need yeah. her nurse. I need her. <laughs> all of that. So that's how you know you got really good um OBGYNs, doctors, nurses when you just don't want to fool with nobody else. Yeah. And it yeah. ain't that you don't like them. You know, you just created that relationship. Yeah, that report. Yeah, you yeah. have that with your doctor. Yeah. And it, I mean the same thing kind of happened to me. Like I if um my son hadn't came at a certain time, of course I was gonna get induced. Right. But when my doctor was on call, of course, but of course, you know, he wants to come when he wants to come. Yeah. So that's how they do. Like a, maybe it was like probably a few days earlier. And then, so then when her colleagues had to deliver me, but uh -huh. it was all fine. But yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't like that at all. But I mean, he here and he doing good. So, you yeah. know, we're straight. She was cool, I guess. <laughs> okay. So my next question is, what are some challenges of minority nurse? Um, I know I had this conversation with two other young ladies and I was just saying that there's a small, uh, but I think it's growing as years have gone by, but it's been a very small minority of nurses and doctors. What's your take on that? Okay. So my take on it is like, gratefully, I have never experienced, you know, being a minority where I'm treated differently or anything right. of that sort. So I think, you know, I'm grateful for it that I never had that experience. Like I've been treated equally no matter where I've been or yeah. even though I'm the baby, like I, I, I call myself that cause I just, I feel I'm like, I'm the baby nurse. Cause I'm, I'm not above learning you uh -huh. know, from the seasoned nurses um, of that sort. But um, I just, with me on, with me only graduating in 2018, I don't feel like it's minority right now. That's Again, good. Other people. And, and, and it could be too because of the pandemic. Right mm -hmm. now, nobody's minority. We need nurses. And exactly. You know what I'm so we are needed so greatly. Yeah. That we have time to different to pick and choose. From, <laughs> yeah. You know, and so I'm the pandemic, it, it was rough. I'm sure. But I feel like it helped us in so mm -hmm. many ways. Like even outside of nursing, like life itself, like people had time to reflect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, mental health was a thing, you know what I'm saying? And you learn yourself, but I mean, it was needed, but it was rough. But I'm so, sure it was. So, I haven't experienced it, and I don't see it for myself. I don't see it. Like I said, I feel like everybody is needed, you know, at this point. Mm -hmm. God, God's the limit, like, so yeah, I, I'm grateful that we have come. It's sad that we had to get to that point, but I'm grateful that we are what we are now, right. Right. Yeah. I'm really starting to see that a lot of people in these um, high ranking jobs, nurses, lawyers, doctors, that type of thing, are really starting to see the benefit of hiring more minorities mm -hmm. and not just blacks, just people that don't look like them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, just, just keep it a buck. Yeah. And I think that they know that we bring so much to the table. You know what I mean? Uh, when it's diverse, we match the same energy. Yeah, when it's diverse, your patients feel better. Yes. Like, you don't want to go yes. somewhere and it's just kind of like typical like standard over a group over here uh -huh. you want to see the diverse I mean and I, you know that's one thing that you know they push for like especially like when you go apply for job the diversity like you can't discriminate against nobody right like disability, ethnicity none of those things and so right you know it, and it's good because it, if the person can get the job done regardless yes. which is the most important part which is the most important part 
Absolutely. Yeah. So what was your experience during the pandemic? Because I know it had to be rough. Because listen, it was rough for us. I couldn't go outside. I know. Yes. I was, that was rough for me. So the crazy part is I was actually transferring to labor and delivery. Oh, wow. At that moment, like <laughs> the week before I started on labor and delivery, it was like a twilight zone. The world was shutting down. Okay. Wow. Like, it was like they started canceling the parade. Like it was like I remember yeah. it was, it was like they canceled. They started canceling stuff, and it was just like we were. I was actually what's going on. From, I was actually coming <laughs> back from out of town, and on the radio, it was just like the world was closing. It was like twilight zone. Ain't that crazy though? Like the crazy. whole world like, shut I'm down. Like, now that I think back, I'm like, this was really happening. Like I know cancel. It was crazy. Um. But so I was transferring there. And so I kind of feel like, honestly, that's one of the reasons why I didn't enjoy um, labor and delivery because I didn't get the full experience. Oh, yeah. Due to the restrictions that were put up on us. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have to work as hard, you know, as the others. Yeah. Because we are like a locked unit. Of course, we okay. had mothers who, you know, were diagnosed with COVID. But we right. had, it wasn't that often. Mm -hmm. And if you are, you only come in if you're going into labor. Other than that, then you stay you know, at home. Yeah. So yeah. it was, it was so weird. I remember like leaving work at times because and going through the garage by the ER and all of that good things. And you see these other nurses, like it's like a different world. It was like they were in hazmat suits, running like crazy. And it was just a different world downstairs. Versus That's crazy. It was. I'm like. That's how it was when we would come to work and how, how it was when we were leaving. And it was just like crazy. So I will say I I felt for my colleagues, I didn't work as hard because I didn't deal directly with COVID patients of that sort or dying patients. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of sheltered, but I could see, you know, what my other colleagues had went through when I would, you know, leave and come to work. So, I mean, it was, it was still pretty rough though. Like, you mm. know, even with me having to work my job, I had to go home. I had to be a teacher. I had to be right. a coach. I had to be the dietary lady. Right. Like, you know, like, it was rough. Right. I, I never had a teacher. And I was forced. To yeah. Be my yeah. Teacher, you know? Yeah. And that I think for me, that was the hardest part for me was trying to keep my son up to par without me selling him. And then right. Said, all he could do was be at a computer all day. Yeah. So he not get to interact with his peers. Yeah. It almost reminded me of a movie. Which one? Like you see oh, movies. Uh -huh. Yeah, you see yeah. movies that like people running around with their heads cut off, and mm -hmm. it's just like the world is about to end. Let's mm -hmm. hurry up and get the stuff that we need so we can vacate. Mm -hmm. yeah. It really reminded me of that. Um, Khalil wasn't here at the time, so I didn't have to yeah. worry about the whole schooling thing. Yeah, but I was considered what they consider essential, and so we were slammed at work. I work at Quest, okay. and we were oh, slammed oh, yeah. with all yeah. kind of COVID samples. I bet, and I was just like, oh my god! I mean, six thousand, seven thousand, ten thousand a night. It was so many of them, and I was like, oh my god! And that happened for like two years straight. And that, and that, you know, it probably amped up too because in order to get admitted, you had to take a test. In yeah. order to have not elective surgery, but when you need surgery, yep. you have to be tested before. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of those. And then, like, even now we get, you know, a few samples here and there, mm -hmm. more in the hundreds versus the thousands. But yeah. when it first hit, it was crazy. So, unfortunately, I still had to go to work. Yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't able to sit at home right. <laughs> like I would have liked to. Right. But um, it was seeing it firsthand. And never experiencing anything like that. And I pray that it never happens again. Yes. Because that was rough. I can only imagine how doctors and nurses and, you know, um, even the patients felt having to go through something like that. One, you don't know what's going to happen from day to day. Mm -hmm. Two, you don't know whether you're going to live to see the next day. Mm -hmm. And then there's literally nothing open. Like, it's it's like a, a vacant city. Like, yeah. Nothing was open. <laughs> and then it took it was months. very sad. It was oh my very gosh. Sad. It was it, it was depressing. I mean, that's why mental health was a big thing. Yeah. It was like, where's your outlet? Like, yep. You know, and a lot of people's outlets is not being in the house. Right. <laughs> like seeing yeah. the daylight. You know what I mean? And then I think a lot of people are still suffering from it. 
you know, not COVID itself per se, per yeah. se, but just the effects of it. Yeah. Losing their jobs, not being able to replace their income. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, mental mm -hmm. health is still a big thing. And so yeah. I think people are very much still... Right now. Exactly. Okay, because listen, <laughs> I'm feeling like, and I've seen somebody do this as a meme where they had the... um what was it when they gave us the stimulus checks during COVID uh -huh. but then mm -hmm. I feel like you giving it to us you almost was mad that you had to give it out and now we are reaping the the, the... We're yeah. definitely for it. exactly kept that I'm telling you because if I felt like because I feel like I'm spending more money with stimulus checks combined mm -hmm. then I would have had you just kept it and me just go out and just get my regular groceries yeah. because the cost of living you're, you're making it hard for people to have to live to keep a roof over their heads you're making it hard for people to have to eat you know what I mean uh clothes have gone and I love to shop mm -hmm. but I can't tell you the last pair of jeans last shirt last pair of shoes I bought but I'm determined to do that for my 30s or for my 30 and fine Okay. I'm, turning, okay. I'm turning 30 again okay <laughs> turning 30 again for the fifth time <laughs> so the pandemic was definitely one for the books that that yeah. was one for the books because that was a rough one it yeah. was a rough one okay so my next one what are the roles and the responsibilities of a nurse i know I you kind of touched on it a little bit yeah so my, my number one for me is definitely advocate for your patient mm -hmm. is top priority for me um, outside of the, you know, given responsibility, vital assessment, yeah, yeah. passing meds, you know, um, those are the things. Establishing rapport, uh, with your patient is definitely a high on my list as well mm -hmm. because that gives the patient, like you said, like we talked about earlier, confidence to confide in you, right, and let you know what's really going on, you know. Um, so yeah, so that I mean that's the responsibility of a nurse, like you're that go-to person before the doctor, basically. And that's it. So do you always see the patients before the doctor does? Or sometimes if the answers are already answered by you, there is there even a need to see the doctor? Yeah, because yeah. some things I can only answer within my scope of practice. Right, and right. To get the answer that you really need, you would need to talk to a provider. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like in the hospital setting or even like at the clinic, like we have medical assistance though. So I'm not directly in contact with the patient unless they need a nurse. Uh, then yeah, you'll see that person first and you'll they'll kind of do a rundown with you and the nurse or the medical assistant will kind of give a, a small report to the doctor to let them know, you know, what they're walking into or whatever and concerns that the patient has and from there. Okay, that's awesome. I mm -hmm. believe that nurses are very essential. So mm -hmm. what is something specifically that they have done to contribute to healthcare? So what we do, like I said, we we kind of are you know, like Batman and Robin, like, mm -hmm. we are the doctor's partner. Like, you know, we work together side by side and we help with getting the patient better, you know, and um, making sure they're taken care of. And so mm -hmm. we're, we're a team and we kind of just communicate back and forth um, to get the job done. So we, we are definitely needed because I don't, you have, I don't know if you have, you do have some doctors who are old school who just, you know, they will do everything by themselves. They don't care. They'll yeah. Them, they'll do whatever because they, they're they used to doing that from how, you know, right. back in the day, um, making house calls with their doctor bag. And stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. I think it just kind of lifts a little load off of them as well. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I think that's good. Um, I hope that doctors that are what we consider seasoned mm -hmm. are more accepting to the fact that there's a nurse there to help. Yeah. Almost like a uh like you mentioned, like a partner, like yeah. a Batman and Robin type of thing. Mm -hmm. Because there are some doctors and I know one personally, my primary uh my uh, PCP is very old school and he's mm -hmm. in his 70s. Mm -hmm. So he's that doctor that will have the tote making them house calls and all yeah. of that type of stuff. <laughs> he's so old school, he calls personally. Yep, we still so the last doctor. time I had a doctor call me personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do have doctors. We it's still doctors out there that'll call patients, certain patients, especially too, if they have that rapport with them and mm -hmm. it's something that they need to talk to them about to get a and they know they need to give them that juicy detail what yeah. a nurse can give versus what a nurse can give. Yeah, they'll call them. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Nurses are essential. I think they're right up there with the uh, you know lawyers and mm -hmm. and I think another essential uh, worker that needs to be up there with you all is teachers. Yeah. Because as you understand from firsthand during the pandemic, mm -hmm. how tough it can be 
to have to teach. And then you only got one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So just imagine a teacher having to teach 15 to 20 kids in one classroom. Yeah. And this generation is different. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they, they, they very, very, <laughs> very, very different. They very different. Um, These kids, they, they grow fast. They grow up fast. You know what I mean? They know a lot, mm -hmm. but they don't know a lot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I, I send up a special, special prayer. For real. <laughs> you know what I mean? For these teachers, for you nurses, for you doctors, you know what I mean? Because you all have a very tedious job, but yet important job. You know what I mean? And so um, even to the people that you encounter, I know it can be di very difficult. Yeah. Very, very difficult. Yeah. So with that being said, I got one more question. And okay. the reason why I wanted to ask is because us both being women, mm -hmm. us not having to be affected by this personally, we may also know people who this may affect. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, whether it be family or friends, people that we come in contact with, even coworkers. The uh, Roe versus Wade, we, we both know that that was overturned. And um, it's been overturned after being in place for centuries, mm -hmm. okay? Not decades, centuries. So this has been in place for a very long time. And I'm going to be honest, the first time I heard it, I didn't think it was real. Mm -hmm. And then when I kept hearing people talk about it, it was on TV, it was on social media, and uh, The Breakfast Club, that's kind of like my source, because yeah. I love them. <laughs> so when I heard it on there, I was like, wow. This is really a thing. And then it when it when it dawned on me and when I thought about it, I was like, well, why would a woman want to, you know, voluntarily give up or, you know, make a decision that's a, a lifelong, you know, I don't want to say consequence, but something she has to really deal with, mm -hmm. you know, as life goes on. I said, and then with me personally having, you know, infertility issues, I just didn't understand the logic of it. And then the longer I sat and pondered on it, there are so many different situations that come up where a woman has to make a decision whether it's something she wants to or not yeah. and and I am pro-life you know what I mean I definitely am but I do understand that um it is also a woman's individual choice to yeah. make the choice that she wants to make yeah. whether it be medically whether it just be you know what I can't handle it I can't mm -hmm. do it you know I don't have the help yeah. whatever the case may be and so now I've, I've come along to you know uh understanding it mm -hmm. and knowing you know that is what it is but I was very uh surprised that men had this say so mm -hmm. that uh I don't feel like it was a woman in the room that stood up for the women yeah you know what I mean that advocated for us mm -hmm. I don't feel like it was um something that we as the people we as women had a say so in mm -hmm. uh, I think it was very much y'all gonna do it yeah okay y'all don't have a choice and we're gonna do we're gonna make y'all do it so much so to where we're gonna make it legal in several states yeah. so even if you tried we gonna make it hard for you to do so. Yeah. What's your take on that? <laughs> <laughs> so I am definitely pro-choice. And from the moment that that situation happened, of course, with me being OB OBGYN clinic. Yeah. We got phone calls at the Wuhan. I believe it. I Women believe were it. Scared, Cause it didn't only affect abortion. It was like they were, you know, talking about birth control options. Uh-huh. So women were freaking out, you yeah. know, like IUDs. You have certain ones, some last for 10 years, some last for eight, seven, uh -huh. five, whatever. And they're like, and if they had just got one like two years ago and there wasn't even an expert, like, can I come get a new one so it could last longer? Like, I need to see <laughs> that. And they was freaking out. But I don't like the fact that men had, you know, a say so, say -so. because they mm -hmm. don't understand what us as women go through yeah that goes back to the diversity of having different parties speak on the situation i guess i agree i agree with that i i feel like everybody has different situations and you never know what a person is going through you never know the situation they got when they got pregnant had it been from incest or rape right right you don't want to carry that you don't want to go through with that pregnancy so absolutely I pro choice for that even if yeah me too or like when you 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 want to be pregnant but then when you go through your genetic testing and they're telling you that your baby this is how your baby's going to live and it's not a good healthy life yeah you don't want to carry this seed for nine months 
to have to deal with that. Some people can't deal with yeah. children, you know? Yeah, and it's it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And so it, you have that choice to terminate that pregnancy based on those findings. Mm -hmm. I am one who I don't know if I would be able to handle a disabled child. Yeah. I can honestly say that. So I would definitely weigh my options when it comes yeah. to something like that. Um, like you said, women sometimes, you know, if they feel like this this ain't motherhood is not for them, give mm -hmm. them that option because you're either setting this child up for failure to be put in the system, to be yep. mistreated, any of those things. You know, like I mean, we see in the news every day how kids are getting killed by their parents getting locked in malnutrition and it could have been a situation where they weren't ready or they didn't yeah. want to out. right so it to, if having a terminating a pregnancy to prevent those things from happening to innocent children yeah I'm all for it like i yeah. am all for it. like if you can come to yourself as a person as a woman and say i'm not ready to be a mama do what you gotta do sis mm-hmm do what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of my, one thing that I was confused on is I know that a woman has the right to choose what she would prefer to do. But my thing was, I think there was a fine line between a woman being grown, doing what it takes to conceive the child. You know what I mean? And then turning around and making the decision, I don't want the child. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think it's a fine line between the two because let's be honest, we know what happens when we are intimate. You know what I mean? We know what we knows what we know what happens when there's a man and a woman. Yeah. Okay, let's just keep it a buck. And then you turn around and say, "Hey, I don't want the child, so let's go ahead and just get rid of it." Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people thought that it was a form of concept or a form of um a uh, birth control. Mm -hmm. You know, a form of or not birth control, a form of what's the word I'm looking for? Uh um a way to just be like, I'm going to do it, but then I'm going to get rid of it. Yeah. Kind of way. Another way of You have those people who do abuse the system and mm -hmm. Lord have mercy on them. But yeah. And I get that too, but don't make us all suffer. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Don't make us yeah. all suffer because you do have those people who are repeat offenders, avid, I, I just get an abortion, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You do have those type. You do have people like that. I will agree. Yeah. But like I said, we. We all can't suffer for those people. Like, cause some people, right? Do have, some people do have like for real life issues. issues. Yeah, Anything. yeah, and yeah, some of them are definitely uh, life threatening. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you know you, and, and you got to make the choice. Instance, yeah, and say for instance, like you, even if you are pregnant, but somehow, like you make it all the way to seven months, eight months. Some people make it right, and the baby's not valuable. You know, yeah, like, yeah. you have to go through that process and it's still considered sometimes an abortion or, you know, different terms. Mm -hmm. It's still considered for that or even, not even that far, they would probably make you deliver. That's fine. But right. like 17 weeks and all of those adjust, the baby's kind of pretty much formed at that time, but yeah. you don't want to walk around with, you. there's not there's nothing safe about walking around with a dead fetus inside of you. So then they have to do make that call. But if yeah. that, you do, you are able to, you know, go through with the process. You just have to, doctors just have to really document that it was medically necessary. Yeah. Um, but, and I can only imagine what that does to the woman's mental health. You know what I mean? Exactly. Because there are some women, you know, like you mentioned, there are some women who, you know, use it and abuse it. But yeah. there are also other women who get pregnant and then have to go through the process of carrying something happens and just imagine how that weighs on her mental. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have to do this, but mm -hmm. because I have to make a choice. Yeah. This is what I have to end up doing. Mm -hmm. And that may deter another woman from wanting to get pregnant again. Yeah. Because she's just not knowing what's going to happen. Right. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think having the option or having to think about whether I got to do this again, whether I got to have yeah. another abortion or whether yeah. I got to, you know, have another operation or another procedure to remove the baby. Then I don't know if this is something I want to do again. Right. So I think it's so many other things that play into factor besides mm -hmm. just the abortion or just, you know, right, just changing the law. The baby. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was just taken back like, wow, the audacity. 
<laughs> yeah. Like this was, was real bold. It this was, was really, really bold. And I don't know if as years go on, whether they will change this log in, you know, flip it back or add something to it or take something out. Who knows? But I, I can honestly say I don't believe that this will be the end. I okay. honestly think that there are some other laws that they may try to flip or reverse. Mm -hmm. um, and then my thing is, I mentioned this to somebody else, is that do they not take into consideration that this not only affects the American women, but this affects women in their family as well. Mm -hmm. You know exactly. what I mean? Their daughters, their mothers. Well, their wives. Not their mamas, but yeah, their wives, their nieces. Their and, right. yeah, yeah, like this is not only affecting us, but they got to abide by the law too. Mm -hmm. Unless it's something y'all ain't doing, y'all ain't telling me. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like y'all got guys, the pool somewhere. Okay. Unless <laughs> something y'all doing, y'all ain't telling us. Yeah. But I just, you know, wanted to get other women's take on that because I know that uh, it's just some things that just us as women um, have to uh, kind of have each other's back on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Although it's not affecting us, just the fact that I'm a woman. Yeah. It affects me. Right. You know and what I mean? We can say it don't affect us now, but we don't know if it's going to affect us later. Absolutely. You Absolutely. never know what tomorrow may bring. You know, like you never Absolutely. know when you're put in a situation where you have to make that decision. Absolutely. So, and that's a good way to put that. Yeah. And as much as that will scare the living life out of me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Life is just so unpredictable and you just never know what you're going to get day to day mm -hmm. or even years from now. So that's a good way to put that. So, you know, kind of mm -hmm. kind of consider that and think about that. Yeah. That, you know, it's just us as women, there's just some stuff, and I'm just like, you know what? I'm a cis too, sis. So right, <laughs> I and definitely go understand. through so much, like me. Oh my gosh, no yes. Idea. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, I think us as women go through. Uh, I think we go through hell and back. Mm -hmm. If it's with our health, if it's with giving birth, if it's with a man, okay. If it's with a spouse, a significant other, just us as women in general, just as a culture of women, we really go through a lot and we are really built like tough, strong. Like we really are. We, we really are build strong. Group. We are yeah. the group. We hold everything together. We absolutely we hold it all together. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think it's a lot of stuff that we don't intend to go through. Yeah. But like I mentioned, life is unpredictable. You just never know mm -hmm. what you got to go through. But to be able to be standing on the other side of it yeah, is a testament all in its own. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? To be able to stand on the side of it. So listen, I'm here for it. Uh, some of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for some of that. Because uh, it'll be a while for Sunday to sit Okay. okay. But, uh, <laughs> I'm leaving it at that. But listen, ma'am, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to come hang with me at the lounge. It was a pleasure chopping up with you about being a nurse. Um, it is amazing to be able to see uh, minority women, minority nurses be at the forefront of, of their careers. It's amazing. And I know you are not going to stop here because I know you got a whole lot more you want to do. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> of today. course. Um, I feel honored when you reached out to me. I was like, what? Oh my God. <laughs> like, I do not do, I don't talk. I don't talk. I don't talk. Like, thank simply, you so much. I appreciate it. Crowds on, I don't, I'm just not a talker. And like, I'm honest, <laughs> I was like, you need to get out of that. And so, like, I was, I was very honored. And then to see the panel of other, you know, black women, yes. that I know we, everybody I know, you know, we. Okay. It was very amazing. So yes, I appreciate you for stepping out of your comfort zone. I know. <laughs> Definitely yes. had to say for real. Yes, I appreciate you for even accepting the invitation to want to come on and be a part. So it's really appreciated. Listen, this won't be the first time or the last. I invite you on. Okay, so get warmed up. I'm good. Okay, you get know, the jitters out. Good, you know. <laughs> see the co-host. No, I'm just okay. I'm just I mean, listen. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking for one. <laughs> Listen, it'll be dope though. Uh, definitely the vibes. Definitely the vibes. This won't be the first and last time. Um, I'm looking to do some panel stuff. Okay. I'm trying to figure out what kind of topics I want to do. Okay. So I'll definitely keep you in mind when it comes to the topics Perfect. and uh, the different panel stuff. You know, when you're not busy, when you got time, definitely I'll hit you up and let you know what that's going to be about as soon as I get it in order and get it together. Is there anything else you want to say to the people? No, I, let you go. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, <laughs> whoever listened or listened to the re-recording. Thank y'all. I love y'all. And everybody have a blessed Saturday. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I will holler at you soon. Thank you. You're welcome. See you.